Hey, what's up you guys? It's Robert, uh, back with another YouTube video. First one in over two years, and I really never thought I'd see the day. But in this video, I just kinda wanna go over what my experience has been like as a first year lube tech. Um, I'm a Chrysler lube tech, well, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Fiat. Let's start off with the backstory of this whole thing. So, I really had, like, high school was ending, and I really didn't know like what I wanted to do, but for sure I knew that I didn't want to just get like some degree that I didn't care about because there'd be nothing like pushing me to do well. <laughs> so that's sort of the big thing here. I need motivation and you know, like an end goal in mind for me to succeed at most things. Comment down below if you're the same way. So ever since I've been like Tiny, tiny, I've had this like obsession for cars. Like anytime my mom and I would be driving in the car, she could ask me, hey, what's that? And I'd be able to name exactly what it was, you know, make and model, didn't matter what it was. And that's not really like crazy, but I've always known deep down that cars were my passion and I wanted to pursue that. And there's a lot of different ways I could have gone, but what I'm doing currently is I'm enrolled in a two year associate's degree program um, at my local technical college. It's uh, automotive technology, but basically you go over in the two years, every single system in a car. First year is usually like the, the easier side of things. Like the first year program at my school is the same program as the one year program, which is like automotive light maintenance. Um, so everything's pretty basic, but you get, you go over every system, just not super in depth. And then year number two focuses in depth on the more complex things, um, you know, transmissions, engine rebuilding, um, things of that nature, you know, advanced chassis systems, all this like driver assist stuff. And I'm currently still, well, it's summertime, but I just finished up my first year. It's been a crazy experience. Like everyone says college goes fast, high school goes fast. They could not be more right. I, this <laughs> year went by faster than any other year has in my life. I think it's because for the first time forever, really, I care a lot about what I'm learning and I want to do well in school um, and I want to do well you know out of school and work as well. Another thing I want to mention um, I really had no you know brand preference when I was looking for a job I wanted something that was you know there's room to move up and I wanted something that's interesting to me in the slightest you know, I no offense to the the Kia Hyundai guys out there, but that's just not really for me. I like I like big, loud, fast cars. So you know, Chrysler has that going for them. They got the Hellcats, they got the Scat Packs, all that sort of stuff. And so that's really what landed me at a Chrysler dealer. And this video is sort of like Chrysler specific, but a lot of the stuff I'm talking about applies to you know anywhere you're gonna work as a lube tech because it's all sort of the same thing in one way or another. So I'm just gonna go over sort of some of the basic job duties and everyday tasks you're gonna be doing as a first year lube tech. Obviously, you're not gonna be tearing apart engines. Um, you're not gonna be tearing apart transmissions. You're not gonna be really doing anything other than oil changes, tire rotations, headlight bulbs, taillights, you know, easy stuff like that. Batteries, air filters, engine air filters. As you, you know, begin to prove yourself, you, you're efficient, you're, you know, proficient in everything that you're doing. You can do an oil change on anything that comes through the door. They'll slowly start to give you more stuff to do, you know, as they trust you because, you know, for me, I had no professional experience in this field whatsoever. Everything that I've ever done has either been, you know, with my dad or just on my own, you know, doing my own oil changes, doing brakes on my car, simple stuff like that. So they had nothing to work off of. And, you know, I can't blame them for just giving you know, me oil changes or tire rotations just to start. But you know, we're almost a year in here and I'm starting to do recalls. I'm starting to do, you know, accessory installation. So like running boards, um, mud flaps, you know, I, I do tires from time to time. When it's a slower day on the lube rack, they'll start giving me more stuff to do. I get a lot of weird projects, radio updates, recalls, software flashes, um, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Not everything you do on the lube rack is gonna be car related, and I just wanna make that clear to everyone that you know may think I'm supposed to be working on cars here, why am I taking out the trash? Why am I taking out the scrap metal? Why am I doing all this like maintenance stuff around the building and not on cars? Well, 
you're the bottom of the totem pole in the dealership hierarchy. You have no say and you have to be okay with that. It's not really hard for me to accept that because it is what it is. I know that this is an entry level job and you gotta, you know, work your way up um, to earn your respect and, uh, you know, really show them that you're valuable because that's, <laughs> that's another big thing. You gotta prove your worth in order to, you know, make it in this field and I, I, it applies in everything. You have to work hard in order to be successful. My teacher, uh, my teacher at school always tells me, or always tells the class, you know, in life you can either be, you can either be the climber or the sitter. The sitter sits around, waits for things to come to him. Uh, the climber chases after what they care about, um, and they do, you know, more work than what's required. And that, I swear guys, is the easiest way to make more money, to have more responsibility. It's the easiest thing. Work hard. <laughs> it's like, common sense, but a lot of people don't get it. If they ask you to do something that maybe you're not comfortable with, that's fine. Try and try your hardest. If you run into a problem, ask questions. They love that. Like, that you're at least giving it a go. You're seeing what you can do with, you know, the limited knowledge that you have, the limited experience you have. But life is all about problem solving, and if you're able to do that, you know, right off the bat, or not right off the bat, but like, one year isn't a long time for all the people I work with. I mean, I've, I work with more than 10 people who have been doing, you know, cars for more than 20 years. You know, trying to get on their level is, it's, it's not possible, but, you know, working it out in your head, problem solving, that's huge. So another thing I want to touch on is pay. You know, if you're starting with no experience, at a dealership anyway, as a lube tech, you're looking anywhere from like 12 bucks an hour to like 13 bucks an hour. Maybe even less, depending on where you're at in the country. But proving yourself, you know, sticking to whatever they ask you to do, whatever your job description is, whatever your job duties are, do them and do them well, you will make money. So a lot of dealership, you know, lube tech jobs, they're gonna provide you with tools, um, but that's not a general rule, and I'm sure there's, you know, circumstances where that doesn't happen. Um, I was fortunate in the beginning, my dealership, you know, has tools for the lube rack. They're not great tools, they're all Harbor Freight, but they definitely get the job done. They give you enough to, you know, get going. But if you really want to start doing more, showing, showing them that you care, you're going to want to get tools. I was also fortunate enough to receive a scholarship um, that included, you know, some snap-on stuff. A snap-on blue chest, you know, 3 8 sockets, quarter-inch sockets, uh, 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch ratchet you know basic stuff to get you going nothing crazy I got a wrench set but there's tons of scholarships out there like that you just have to actually do the work and apply for them the one that I applied to it's uh, Wisconsin Automotive Truck Dealers Association we're literally begging people to apply because they have money and they don't have anywhere to you know give it out so my teacher was telling me about that I went home the same day applied and I got it you know a couple days later but you don't need snap-on to be a good lube tech. I have a lot of Harbor Freight stuff still. It's good enough for now, um, and I've been trying to purchase more and more snap-on Matco, you know, good stuff. But it's not always easy when you're paying for school and trying to buy these really, really expensive tools at the same time. You just gotta be sort of good with your money, put it where it matters, buy tools, because the tools are gonna make you money. Um, I don't recommend getting stuck in a snap-on financing deal for, you know, a $20,000 box at the age of 18. The box isn't what makes you money, it's the tools. I'm sure you've all heard that, but um, it really couldn't be more true. The the highest paid tech at my dealership has a Husky box. It's 1200 bucks, brand new, but he has a lot of really good tools that go in that box. And just keep that in mind. I know it's tempting because they're big and they're pretty and nice, but you really don't need that. Um, I have a Husky box at work. It does me just fine. But things you definitely want to get, um, if you can't afford a full, you know, half inch um, socket set, I definitely recommend just getting the lug nut sizes that you need for your specific dealership for Chrysler. It's usually, um, well, 17, 19, 21, 22. That does all of the lug nuts. I'm pretty sure 17, 19, 22 does all the lug nuts. Um, if that's all you can afford, that's totally fine because 
You don't really need all the other half inch sockets right away. I just got them because they were a good deal from Tekton with the student discount. The job is what you make of it. You can get by with whatever tools they have, but it really does make your job a lot easier to have your own stuff. They had an impact for us, but again, it was the Harbor Freight one that had been used for three years now. Um, so it's not awesome. Um, I recently got the Matco 2779, which is the you know 1600 foot pound air impact. I was considering the Milwaukee one, but air is still preferred for me at least. Um, I know it's not awesome to have to walk around with a hose, but you can keep it going for 15 seconds and it's not going to, you know, start on fire. So <laughs> that's sort of my rationale behind that. Get a good wrench set. I have these awesome, awesome, awesome Matco um, super long double box and wrenches and they're it's five wrenches but ten sizes and I use that all the time because you can just pull one out get the drain plug loose and you know dump the oil um, super easy you don't have to mess around with sockets so um, I really recommend those you're also gonna want a decent flashlight I have a stream light it was like 80 bucks which I know is a lot to spend on a flashlight but you use it all the time all day long so it's kind of worth getting something that'll, you know, last. You can drop it, you can spill stuff on it, doesn't matter. And it's got a nice little USB charger so you don't have to worry about replacing batteries and stuff like that. I think another really, really good thing to have is I have the Milwaukee, I think it's an M18 quarter inch hex impact. Not honestly my favorite thing, but I use it all the time. Um, I got it on a good deal, I think it was like a hundred bucks. And then I got like the, the Milwaukee, I don't know what they're called, Shockwave maybe? Or just like hex socket adapters, stuff like that. And I use that all the time. I keep a 10 on it all the time because a lot of cars have those under shields you gotta take off and they're all 10s on Grand Cherokees. And yeah, Grand Cherokees, the oil filter, you have to pop up a cover and there's a 10 under there. I use that like literally all the time. And it's nice being able to just chuck sockets on it, whatever you need, so that's really nice. Another good way to move up in the dealership, everything's, like I cannot repeat this enough, if you do all of your online training, you're gonna make more money because it certifies you to you know, do more jobs. I'm currently at level one, um, which is where the Chrysler students are. Um, at this point too, so I'm looking to get to level two by next year, there's three levels. It, it's really time consuming, but you know it shows them that you're dedicated once again and it does you know tell you how to do some specific things that may not be completely obvious um, without knowing the background so that's also really cool um, another thing I want to bring up I don't know about every school but my school every time we finish a class that has an ASE test associated with it we take the student version of that test and if I've passed which I you know I have all of them I go out and schedule the actual ASE test at the same time because then I have it um, and I won't need to get recertified for another five years, which is really nice. Again, that's another thing you can show to your boss. Hey, look, I'm certified. Let me try this out. And, you know, if you do well with that, you're going to make more money. They're going to give you more jobs. They're going to give you more opportunity to grow. That's basically, you know, my advice, my experience with this whole lube tech thing so far. You know, I don't have any dreams of staying on the lube rack forever, but it's an awesome start for people that are going into this field with no professional experience whatsoever. Um, it opens your eyes to a lot of different aspects of the dealership. You know, they're all different. There's the parts world, there's the service world, and there's the sales world, and they all have different systems that you gotta learn. You know, with all that, you're gonna become a better technician in the future, um, and certainly a better lube tech for now. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment down below if you guys are a lube tech or if you're you know interested in cars, comment down below your favorite car. I'm interested to know. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. I'll see you guys next time.